The moment in time is almost at hand. We are only a few days away from WrestleMania 32. Oh, boy. And I decided, since it is WrestleMania week, it's time to do another Q&A video. This time, a WrestleMania-themed Q&A video. So, let's see what you guys gave me for this Q&A episode. All right, let's get started. WWE961 asked, if this WrestleMania had all the big names like Cena and Sting and Orton and Rock and Rollins, could it have been one of the best ever? Uh... Probably not, because to me, when you're talking about a WrestleMania and an impact of a WrestleMania and the greatness of a WrestleMania, you talk about it in three compartments and three categories. The build-up to the event, the entirety of the event itself, and then what happens as a consequence, the aftermath of that show. And when I look at something like WrestleMania 32, let's say you had all the major players involved, you know, is that necessarily going to compensate for the piss-poor storytelling that we got on the road to this WrestleMania 32? Would it have really been any different? Would it really have been any better? I don't know. And even if you have all of those big names available, does it really change the quality of the matches on the show? Does it actually change the presentation of the show? Does it change the feeling of the show itself? I don't know that it does that. And I don't know if it that significantly positively impacts the aftermath of the show. I'm sure having all of those or even some of those big names in the fold, although keep in mind Rock is actually involved with the show, we just don't know how yet. Um, even if you had some of those names, let's, let's, like let's say you had Cena and Sting, but you didn't have Orton and Rollins. It most certainly doesn't hurt to have those two. It can help, but it is no guarantee of anything, so I would probably lean towards it not helping it be one of the best shows ever. Uh, ENC98, Mania match you're looking most forward to right now? Now that is an incredibly interesting question. I don't know. I would tend to gravitate towards the three money marquee matches the most. Um, you know, in terms of Lesnar and Ambrose, I want to see where they go. I want to see how they arrive at the only real option, which is having Ambrose go over Lesnar at that show. Um, and with it being that no holds barred street fight that most certainly will play into the strengths of Dean Ambrose and mask some of the weaknesses and deficiencies, and it most certainly plays into the strengths of Brock Lesnar. So that match in and of itself, in terms of pure match quality, could be the match of the night, and especially if Ambrose goes over Lesnar, and it's done in the right way, not in some bullshit fashion, you know, that could really be the best match of the night and the most positive moment of the night. There's a sadistic part of me that is looking forward to Roman Reigns versus God for the title. Although, you know, when you go into this situation, you're talking about Roman Reigns has been in that featured WrestleMania spotlight before, and he's delivered the goods. You've got God there, so God knows what he's doing. You can usually count on God to deliver at WrestleMania. So that match in and of itself has potential, but a lot of it's going to be how the match is set up how the match is worked, how the match is built up, and how the finish happens, how it's executed, and how it goes over. And then you've got that Hell in a Cell match between Shane and Taker, and this is one of these matches where I sit there and say, Ugh. Yeah. Mm. That almost is like a lose-lose situation to me. I guess at this moment, just purely from a fan standpoint and a fan standpoint alone, while it's Taker at Mania, and there's always something there about that, even though it's not nearly the same now that the streak is over, the match that forward, in terms of an all-around standpoint, the match I would be looking forward to the most is Ambrose and Lesnar. I have the most morbid curiosity about Roman Reigns and God at Mania. Uh, WWE 961 also asks... Have you seen any of the photos of the WrestleMania stage, and do you think it'll be any good? Well, usually they spend a lot of money on actually bothering to make a WrestleMania stage. It's one of the few shows where they don't just sit there and throw up a Raw, raw stage and, you know, change the graphics and try to make you feel like it's a big show. So I'd expect the stage to be good. I don't know if it'll be great, but I'm sure it'll be good. Uh, let's see here. The Titan Zero, will the WWE ever reach WrestleMania 50 or 100? I would think WrestleMania 50 is a pretty good certainty. I mean, we're already at 32 now. Do I really think the comp company would completely go away over the span of 18 years? I don't think so. WrestleMania 100, you know, let's just hope I'm around to see it, I guess, would be the best way I could put that. Um, let's see here. Commando 1986. 
Do you think it's a good idea to induct matches into the Hall of Fame due to their historical significance? Steamboat and Savage being an example. Oh, God, Christ, please. When you think of WrestleMania 3, matches of historical significance, you don't think about Steamboat Savage IC title. This is this Dave Meltzer bullshit that needs to stop. Historical significance, WrestleMania 3, the match that actually put 93 plus thousand people in the goddamn arena, was Hogan Andre for the belt, period. End of discussion. End of discussion. In terms of inducting matches, nah. Nah. Let's induct wrestlers, let's induct tag teams, let's induct managers, let's induct women, people behind the scenes, and I guess the celebrity every year, whatever. Those are the type of people we should, and things we should be inducting, not actual matches. That seems kind of silly to me. Just my opinion on that one anyways, but thanks for the question. Paululio67, who do you see Kevin Owens main eventing WrestleMania with in a few years? I don't know if I see him ever main eventing a WrestleMania. If we could be so honest, who's to say that he would ever main event a WrestleMania? If he did, I guess your odds would be on Roman Reigns. But again, who says he's ever going to main event a WrestleMania? Mr. Tuxedo, if WrestleMania doesn't go over well with you, do you think the WWE uh, will give up on Reigns? No, 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 no. Because what, what some fans and what people may think did not go over well, as opposed to the WWE in terms of box office numbers, maybe viewership on the network, network subscriber numbers, if they are at a level where the WWE is satisfied, then that is what they're going to care about the most. They can edit, they can fix, they can alter that noise in future editions of when they show that WrestleMania 32 show. And so no, it, it, when it comes to the WWE, we know this, when they dig in their heels, it doesn't matter. You can hijack shit until you're blue in the fucking face. You've been doing it with Cena for a decade, and it doesn't fucking matter. And it seems like they have dug in their heels on Reigns. They are not going to give up on that guy, no matter what. Chairman 015, could we see the Wyatts interfere with the Lesnar-Ambrose match and cost Lesnar in a match? And this is where we get to, when I'm talking about Lesnar and Ambrose, Ambrose needs to win. He must win. It is the only real viable option for them from a booking standpoint. But this is the type of stupid shit that they would do to arrive at that point to where it doesn't hurt Lesnar because, by God, we got to fucking protect Lesnar. Even though we're in a goddamn street fight and Ambrose can do 500,000 other fucking things to him to help him barely get the victory to where Ambrose does get something out of it. And Lesnar still isn't hurt by it because you protected him because this was the only way fucking anybody could goddamn beat him. But you sit there and have somebody like the Wyatts fucking come out. It's just stupid. It's a chicken shit way to get at the result you need to get at. And all the while, it doesn't help Lesnar, it doesn't protect Lesnar, and it actually hurts Ambrose, and in my opinion, makes the Ambrose character look stupid. If anybody in the WWE is thinking about involving the Wyatts in that match, unless you have them wipe both of them out, and then you just leave it up for grabs at that point, don't do it. Because it is a mistake. Do not do it. Period. I don't know how else to emphasize it. Because that's a WWE type of decision. And the last thing the WWE needs to be doing at WrestleMania 32 is making WWE type of decisions. Because those decisions will ultimately fail. Let's see here. The post-snap. On a scale of the invasion to the Monday Night Wars, how good bad do you think WrestleMania 32 will be? Well, that is a hell of a scale. A hell of a scale. Um, you know, I will say this. The build-up to this show has been shit. And I don't know if the aftermath and the follow-up to this show is going to be very good. However, with that said, I think in terms of contained into its own night, in spite of the perceptions we have and the beliefs that we have and what type of expectations we may or may have not already built up for the show, I think there is a chance, and I'll talk about this this week actually, that this show as its own self-contained entity could actually deliver, and I think be better than 31, and perhaps even be better than WrestleMania 30. I know, oh my God, how could I say that? But there's a chance. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. Doesn't mean I think it will happen. There is a chance it could happen. And I think it is realistic that it could. Uh, then he also asked, what match am I looking forward to the least at WrestleMania 32? Um... The spot fest that is going to be that fucking IC title ladder match, especially if Dolph Ziggler fucking wins the belt. <laughs> Fuck Dolph Ziggler! Um, that would probably be the one in terms of the, the more feature matches on the card that I'm looking forward to the least. However, 
if they're using their heads here, they would still have Owens retain and maybe have Zayn be the closest one. Because a lot of you want fucking El Generico, Kevin Steen, like it's 2010, all fucking over again. Well, this is a way you can launch into that extreme rules between the two of these guys. But you need Owens to go over here. You need Owens to retain here. You don't need Owens to lose the belt in bullshit bitch fashion. Uh, little DJ Boy. The Hall of Fame class of 2016. Does it look good or bad? I think it actually looks pretty good, honestly. I think it looks pretty good. That's a solid Hall of Fame class. I mean, I'm happy as hell that the big boss man's getting inducted. You've got Sting in there. I mean, that's not a bad place to start. The Fabulous Freebirds are long overdue. That's a solid Hall of Fame class. I think, and contrary to popular belief, a lot of people thought that I would be incredibly excited about uh, Miss Jacqueline being inducted. I'm kind of ambivalent towards it. Have you ever really heard me talk about her in that much of a glowing sense? I mean, Jeff Jarrett's been there, so that kind of ruins it for me if you get my drift. Um, Duke THS, wouldn't it be awesome if Michael P.S. Hayes came out at WrestleMania to help the New Day and even the odds? What's he going to do? Wear the fucking stars and bars and be rocking out to Leonard Skinner? <laughs> Michael P.S. Hayes is racist fuck ass. It'd be more entertaining if he came out as Doc Hendricks and helped even the odds. <laughs> the fucking Freebirds helping out the New Day. This is an example of where Duke, I'm sorry, man. I love for you, bro, but this is an example of having way too much fucking time on your on your hands to think of this shit. How the hell is that gonna go over? <laughs> That's like having David Duke campaign for Barack Obama. <laughs> Rush Limbaugh and Do Donovan McNabb into the Hall of Fame. <laughs> no, you know what? On second thought, I want to see that, Duke. You're right. You're right. We need to see that. We have to see that. That'd be fucking awesome. Uh, Ethan M, 1834. What outcomes can happen to set up WWE in a good standing point for the year? <laughs> Ambrose needs to win, and he needs to win in a non-bullshit fashion. Um, I guess Shane would have to win. Um, God's got to do everything he can to get Reigns over the right way in that match at that night. Um, Styles needs to beat Jericho, and that match needs to really deliver. Owens needs to retain. Sasha needs to win the Divas title, and that match needs to kick ass. Um, so those are some things that could happen to set up set up things well. Is kind of what I'm thinking of. Uh, One Piece RKO three interesting name. Shouldn't Mania be on a network like Fox, CBS, NBC, ABC to have WrestleMania make it to the mainstream? You know, this is something I've thought about in years past, and especially with the step away from the pay per view business model, I wouldn't be that opposed to it. I I. I know it probably would never happen, but there's something there to be said about this that it's not the dumbest idea in the world because maybe you could sit there for that four hours of television. You could sit there and sell, you know, X amount in advertising revenue that you're splitting with the network. Now, part of the reason for the WWE to go to the network is so that way they're not really having to share their revenue with much of anyone outside of MLB and their streaming service that they're using to help them with this. Um, but, you know, maybe this is something where you can create a mini Super Bowl bidding war in terms of, you know, for the advertising space, maybe a 30-second spot goes for, you know, $200,000, $300,000. You know, I, I don't know all the particulars of if it would really work or not, if, if the financials would really balance it out. I mean, would it be the worst thing in the world? No. I mean, I know they've done some crap in the past where they've shown like an hour of WrestleMania on NBC, but you're talking about the entire show. I think there's something to be said about that. Maybe if you did it even as a replay the week after, because at the end of the day, you need to get more eyeballs on the product. That's always going to be a good thing. And if you could sit there, even if you have however many odd people watch WrestleMania on the network live in person, um, watch on DVR after the fact, you got to figure you'll get some new eyeballs. There are still people that do not have the Internet. There are still people that do not have cable or satellite television. And you'd be able to reach some of those people with your event, with your show. You know, so it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world by any means. Uh, and then he also asked, why does WWE have B-rated celebrities perform at WrestleMania when they should be having people like Drake and Kanye? And I won't mention the other name. You should be ashamed of yourself. But I think it's a fair point. I do. I mean, 
You know, they fucking had Kardashian before two, 2008 at 24. Why the hell can't they land Kanye? Yeah, why the hell can't they land Drake? Maybe that would make more sense if you were having this, the event at the Sky Dome. But you probably want to get Drake involved in an angle at that point in time. But I, I get what you're saying, especially when it comes to some of the musical performers. Why the fuck do we have these B-listers like Flo Rida and so on and so forth? I mean, that's a fair question. Um, let's see your D styles three, four, three on a scale from one to 10. How will mania be? If I had to predict right now, a seven, because the piss board buildup really hurts it in the aftermath. I'm not that sure of, I think there's a chance, although there are going to be several factors that play into how the show as a self-contained entity in and of itself does. I think there's a chance that this show could surprise a little bit, and this show could be a little bit better than we are giving it credit for, again, within its own confined uh, four-hour time frame. So I'll go somewhere between a six to, to a seven, you know, which is a solid to average show. Okay? Let's see here. Joe Pugs at WrestleMania. Who has the highest risk of kind tied trying to choppy-choppy their pee-pee? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how Kai and Ty came the fuck up out of WrestleMania QA, but choppy pee pee! <laughs> Val Venus, run brother! Run brother! RKO Legend 1, any WrestleMania 32 previews or predictions? Yeah, Randy Orton's not gonna be there. Damn it! Been awesome if he just came out and randomly RKO'd people, most especially fans. That would be awesome. Oh, you want to be a Tyler Breeze cosplay? RKO, bitch! Oh, you were in Dolph Ziggler Guideliner! RKO, bitch, into flaming shards of ass glass! Exactly. Uh, w. Rain Foster Podcast. Is this the worst WrestleMania of all time? Based on the card and knowing what will happen anyways. Uh, and If this is going to get into the category of 9, 11, or 13, I don't know about all of that. Is there a chance that it could go on the end of 27, perhaps? But 27 is not nearly as bad as 9, 11, and 13 were. That's the truth. So I'm, I wouldn't go that far. It's not that bad. Uh, let's see here. Five greatest matches never to happen at WrestleMania. That is also a good question. Uh, tops of the list is Hogan Austin, Cena, Taker, Taker, Sting, and I'm just going into any particular order here. I guess you go Cena Hogan. You could go Rock Shawn Michaels. You could go, frankly, Austin Taker, Rock Taker. I mean, you got so many options in terms of matches that actually never happened one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. And to be fair, in terms of a one-on-one -on -one match, we never got the Rock versus Triple H at a freaking WrestleMania either. You know, so, I mean... It's one of those things. I, I could go any number of directions. Hogan Flair is obviously always going to be at the top of the list there. Always going to be at the top of the list. But there are a lot of different ones that you could have sat there and said. Some might say, you know, Hogan and Brett. You know, that's that's a fair one, too. That never happened at WrestleMania. Um, you'd have liked to have maybe seen Andre the Giant versus Yoko, maybe. Uh, Andre versus Big Show. You know, there's, there's so many different options. You know, maybe uh, thinking of a tag team sense, you would have liked to have seen the Rockers versus the Hardy Boys. Man, could you imagine how fucking awesome that match would have been? You know, I mean, it's uh, there's a lot of possibilities of what you could have done. Um, you know, Legion of Doom versus just about any fucking buddy doesn't matter. Uh, you know, a lot of different options of what you could have done in terms of best matches that never happened at WrestleMania. And I just named off some of them. And I'm probably leaving some out, too, to be completely fair. Uh, Dick Lonious Games, what do you think has been Undertaker's worst WrestleMania match in his career? I think everybody is in pretty much safe agreement here that it was Giant Gonzalez WrestleMania 9. That was bad. That was terrible. Um, JCH1194, what are your thoughts on Jacqueline going into the Hall of Fame? I'm kind of ambivalent towards it. Nice. Good for her. Hopefully your tit doesn't bust a leak. Hopefully Jeff Jarrett's not trying to run a train on her in the back. You know, maybe he'll, I don't know, maybe he'll sneak there and maybe he'll give Karen some carrots and no, oh, it's, you know, who knows. <laughs> Let's see your Guest five closes us off. Why of all things are we presented with this shower of shit going into the grandest stage of them all? Um, I think part of it is, this is, 
in part due to some of the injuries. Injuries are a factor. They should not be an excuse. They cannot be a crutch, and they are not the only reason for this to happen. I think part of this is the fact that the WWE's chickens are coming home to roost in terms of years of failing to develop new fresh faces and new superstars. That's where this really costs them, a show like this at a moment like this, where you shouldn't even need Cena. You shouldn't even need Orton. It should be Roman and Ambrose. Okay, Rollins is out with injury, so fucking what? Bray Wyatt. Ryback. It should be those types of guys along with others that are carrying the way where the company doesn't miss a beat. The show goes on and is as good as it ever could be. But instead, because the company for so many years has fallen back into these patterns of the part-timers and pushing the same faces and never wanting to branch out and never really wanting to grow and feature new stars and create and make new stars, and in part they have forgotten how to create and make new stars, this is the result and byproduct of what you get. I mean, yes, when you look at it, there's very little that sits there and makes you think, you know, from the purest sense that this is a WrestleMania. It does not feel like a WrestleMania. Let's just hope Sunday that it ultimately does feel like a WrestleMania and it delivers like a WrestleMania should. And let's hope this is the WrestleMania that, frankly, the WWE needs and not, as it looks like it could shape up in the minds of many, as the WrestleMania that the WWE deserves. Thanks for all of your questions for this QA video. I'll see you throughout the week. And oh boy, Sunday, WrestleMania 32. In the meantime, if you haven't checked out the old WrestleMania review series on this channel, make sure you do so as well. I'll see you later.